Hello everyone, my name is Anthony Nunez and this video will be running you through the basics of circuit design and simulation using National Instruments AWR Microwave Office. This video is intended for the students of RF circuit design at Florida International University, both the undergraduate version and the graduate version, as this information will be vital to your completion of the class project. So today we're going to be designing a simple two-way Wilkinson power divider. It's going to be an equal divider, so we're going to be seeing um, 3 dB on either side of these branches. We're going to be feeding into the actual power divider circuit using half wavelength uh, microstrip lines and implementing it using a simple uh, radius bend and quarter wavelength legs as a standard. We're going to be basing our design for at least as far as this video is concerned off the circuit provided on page 328 of the fourth edition microwave engineering book by Pozar, which I will be showing you now. So the circuit we'll, we will be implementing is the one shown here in figure uh, 7.8b. It shows a Z0 characteristic feed line that branches off into two quarter wavelength lines of impedance root 2 Z0, then feeding into the two branches of half power each, which would return back to the characteristic impedance. We also have a resistor that branches across these two legs of the power divider, and its impedance is going to be two times the characteristic impedance. So now we're going to get familiar with the web, with the actual system. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new project. So when you first open up AWR, this is what it is going to look like. Now the cool thing about this software is that it is actually capable of doing countless things. It can do uh, circuit simulations at microwave and RF frequencies. It can do EM simulations of these circuits at these frequencies and it can also do system simulations. And if you are attending Florida International University, there is another class known as RF System Design, which also uses this software for doing simulations, and you will be using the system simulator for that. However, all these things are available, and we specifically are going to be focusing on the actual circuit simulator. So one of the first things I want to bring your attention to is the pane here on the left-hand side of the screen. It says project and then has many categories of things that are related to the project. The first thing we will be opening is project options. You can right click and hit edit or simply double click on the window. This will pull up a project options window where the first tab that is available to you is the frequencies tab. In this case, we are going to be simulating this circuit from four gigahertz to five gigahertz again, stop and stop frequency with a step of 0.01 gigahertz. We make sure to tick replace, and we make sure that our data entry units are in the form of gigahertz, and then finally we hit apply. This will add the 101 points, which will be used by the simulator in order to give us our different graphs we will be looking at later. We will also switch over to global units and make sure that our length type is set to millimeter, frequency to gigahertz, angle to degrees, and any other things that might be of interest to you, and hit OK. We will then right click on circuit schematics and create a new schematic. We will simply call this Wilkinson Power Divider, and hit OK. This will bring up our pane where we will be designing. Down here on the bottom under the project pane is another tab called elements. When you first open up the software it will look like this. Circuit elements, system blocks, and 3D EM elements. Since we are designing circuits we will expand the circuit elements. This Wilkinson power divider will be implemented using microstrip transmission line. We will be using a substrate of FR4, standard epsilon R, 4.4, 1 ounce copper. And we have to make sure that we tell AWR 
the substrate that we are using. It is of the utmost importance in order for it to understand how to simulate the circuit. So we will be going to the substrates category, expanding that, or simply just clicking on it. We will be selecting M sub microstrip substrate definition and dropping it into the window. Another way of doing this is coming up to the toolbar and hitting the element button. Here, if you already know the name of the element, you can type it in, in this case, M sub. You click on it, hit OK, and you can drop it into the window. Elements can be deleted simply by clicking on them and hitting delete, or you can also right click and toggle enable if you want to simply disable them and you don't want to delete them. So now this drops the microstrip substrate block into our circuit window. We will double click on this to bring up the properties window of this block. The first parameter we can change is epsilon r. Descriptions of each parameter can be found on the right and describe what they are. In this case, we are using FR4, so we will set the epsilon r to 4.4. .4. The height of the substrate we're going to be using is a 60 mil, which is pretty standard. That translates to about 1.524 millimeters. The thickness of the conductor, we said it was one ounce copper, is going to come out to 35 microns. However, our data entry units for length are in millimeters, so we'll be typing in 0 0.035. Rho is the metal bulk resistivity normalized to gold. Since we're using copper, it's going to be 0 0.7. Tand is the loss tangent. In this case, we're going to be using the more extreme version of uh, FR4 which will be 0 0.018. And then epsilon r normalized, we'll set to 4.4. .4. This is irrelevant at the moment. We'll be talking more about that in a later video. And we will change the name to FR4, just for convenience sake. Hit OK. We will see that in the visual parameterization of the component, we can actually see the different values of our substrate. Next, we're going to need to drop some components that we'll be using in this design. So we're going to expand microstrip, we're going to go to lines, and we're going to choose MLIN, which is microstrip line close form. We'll drop one of those into our design. We will also need a junction, a T junction to be exact. So we will go into junctions and select M T close form. We'll drop one of those in here as well. We will then go to pens, we will need a bend, and we will choose M curve which is microstrip radius corner. We will drop one of those in as well. Great. So now what we want to do is that we want to start to lay out our circuit. However, there are going to be some special quantities that we're going to need in order for this to work. Specifically in designing our circuit, we're going to need to know the widths and the lengths of the different transmission lines so that we can actually get a proper simulation out of it. The great thing about AWR is that it has a transmission line calculator available right in the software. If you come up to the tool bar up here and under tools, you will find TX line. This will open a special transmission line calculator, which has calculators for all of the common types of transmission lines, including microstrip. Under dielectric constant, we will type in the dielectric constant of our substrate. In this case, we're going to type in 4.4. Select the conductor as copper. It will change the, condu the, un the conductivity automatically. And the loss tangent will be 0 0.018. Then on the right, in physical characteristic, the height should be set to the proper height, 1.524 millimeters. Thickness of the conductor, 35 microns. And then on the left, we can select the characteristic impedance frequency, and electrical length in degrees that we want for the transmission line. We will leave the impedance as 50 ohms, and then frequency we're going to set to 4.5, right in the middle of the frequencies that we specified for the simulation. So now we're going to go ahead and hit the synthesize button left to right. It will take these quantities on the left and calculate for us the necessary length and width needed to achieve those quantities. If we work the other way, we have a line of a given width and length of a height of the substrate and thickness of the conductor, and we want to know what the impedance and the electrical length are, 
we can also analyze those quantities to give us the impedance and electrical length for a given frequency. But in this case, we are synthesizing. So we hit the right arrow. This will give us the length and width in the specified units. In this case, we have selected millimeters. It, by standard, it comes in microns, but I have switched it to millimeters in the past. So it will show up in millimeters. It is in our best interest to write this down. 50 ohms has a width of 2.90 millimeters. We will also need root 2 of Z0. That is going to be for 70.7. We're going to go ahead and synthesize again, and the width for that is going to be 1.51 millimeters. We will then be feeding in and out of the Wilkinson power divider using half wavelengths. So we're going to go 180 degrees and synthesize for length. So the length for 180 degrees is going to be 18.59 millimeters. We will also simulate for the quarter wavelength, 90 degrees, and that will give us 9.29 millimeters. Great. So now we've written that down on a piece of paper. We can minimize this and come back to our design. Another great feature available in AWR is the ability to drop equations and create variables in our design. This allows us to edit all of our design from one place. I change a variable here, and it will propagate through my design wherever that variable is used. So I'm going to make my life easy here, and I'm going to make the first variable Z naught, and make that equal to the width for the 50 ohm line. It's going to be 2.90. Control enter goes to a new line, and then we're going to call this one root 2 z naught, and this is going to be 1.51. We're also going to make half, that's going to be for our half wave, and that's going to be 18.59, and we're also going to make one for quarter, and that's going to be 9.29. Since we're using a radius, a uh, radial curve, we're going to go ahead and also make one here called radius. We're going to set that to one millimeter, and I think we are ready to go. So first thing we're going to do is the feed line. We're going to be feeding into the design here, so let's move some of this stuff out of the way. We're going to move this here. The width is going to be Z0. The length is going to be half wavelength, so we're just going to call this half. Now, if I change Z0 over here, it will propagate to this component, and we will see exactly what this looks like a little bit later in the design. But right now we have the feed line. This feed line will be going into a junction. We can right click on the component, hit rotate, click and drag. You will see this line that creates an angle. That is our rotation. You can also see the ghost of the component of how it's going to land. And we're gonna connect it as such. You can either connect the components right onto each other. We can also create wire connections between the different parts. In this case, it's just a little bit cleaner and a little bit neater, simply just to connect them on top of each other. So here we're going to edit the parameters of the actual MT without going into the properties window. So our feed line of Z naught width is feeding into port three of our junction. So we're gonna go here to W3 and change that to Z naught. Imagine if you had typed in 2.90 here in width, and then you wanted to change your characteristic impedance from 50 ohms to 100 ohms. You would have to go to each component and change the Z naught. But if you design using variables, you can simply come here, change this from 2.9 to whatever new width you need, and it would propagate through your design wherever the Z0 was used. Now, we know that the legs of the actual Wilkinson are going to be root 2 Z0. So we're just going to change the width here of the port 1 and port 2 to root 2 Z0. As such. We will then click on this transmission line, copy, and paste. We see a ghost. If you right click, you can rotate the component. I'm going to rotate it and drop it into place, changing the width to root 2 Z naught. We're then going to right click, rotate this bend, place it in position. The width of this bend will be root 2 Z naught. The angle leave it as 90 and the radius will be radius. Then we'll go ahead and copy, paste, rotate. 
and then copy, paste, and drop this one. Now the exit one is going to be C naught again. That's going to be half, which we already have there. Another component we're going to need is a resistor. Resistors can be found under elements, lumped element, resistor, resistor. We'll go ahead and drop it here at the position of the Z0 and use a wire connection to connect it between the actual quarter wavelength line that we're going to be building and the actual half wavelength that feeds out to the port, that feeds out to the ports. This will be two times, so two asterisk Z0 according to the circuit. All right, perfect. So now, how do I want to implement this quarter wavelength line here? I can do half and half or different proportions. In this case, because we're not taking into consideration that we're going to need trace here on which we will be soldering this resistor because we're not going to be fabricating this exact design, we will simply just leave it floating and we're going to do a half and half design here in this case. So we'll go to length and we'll say quarter slash two. That is basically half of the quarter uh, wavelength. And we'll go here also and go quarter and half. You can move around the little properties. Great. Now, another thing we can actually do is come up here and click on this button here that says View Layout. We will then Control A to select all and click this button that says Snap Together. And what this will do is it will show us the layout of our circuit and we can see if we like it. Perfect. So here we can see the half wavelength feed line, the root 2 Z0 component of the Wilkinson, and then finally the exit line of Z0. So once we've decided that everything looks exactly as we'd like it, we can go ahead and actually shift click these components, one, two, three, four, hit copy, and then you will paste them down here. Then we can drag select them all, right click, flip, and draw a horizontal line which will flip it over the x-axis. And then this will allow us to simply just drag them again and drop them into place. We draw another wire from the other end of the resistor down. Now we're set to go. Let's get a sip of water while we work. Okay, perfect. The layout is still available in the tab up here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to select all, snap together. Oh no, our layout is wrong. How can we fix this? It's not a problem. This corner here is what led to the design actually flipping the wrong way. So we can simply fix this by right clicking, flip. We can do a vertical flip. Oh no, that flipped it the wrong way. So we'll do a horizontal flip that also flips it the wrong way. Okay, that's not good. So we're gonna do a left click here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it out. I'm gonna delete the connection. Simply click on them and delete, click, delete. We're gonna go ahead and do a flip, vertical flip, and then we're gonna do a rotate. We're gonna rotate it into position. There we go. And drop it in. It should fix our problem. Perfect, now it looks as it should. The final thing we need to add here are ports. We need to be able to provide an excitation signal and have exit ports from which that signal will propagate so we can get the S parameters out of the circuit. So we're gonna hit the port button up here and we're gonna drop our ports in. Again, you can right click to rotate. Now we've added our ports, perfect. You'll notice that the ports have a characteristic impedance of 50 ohms, you can change this if you want. So now, one last look, make sure everything looks right. Great. Now we're going to go back to the project tab. Go to graphs, right click, new graph. Let's call this one transmission. And make sure that we've selected rectangular type and hit create. Then we will right click on it, add measurement. Under linear, port parameters, S, you select your source, in this case, Wilkinson Power Divider. And we want to know to port 2 from port 1, the magnitude of that S21 parameter in dB, and hit Add. Also, from port 1 to port 3, 
go ahead and add that as well. And then we also want to check the isolation between ports 2 and 3. So from port 2 to port 3, we will also add this and hit close. We'll make another graph. Rectangular, call this one match, create, right click, add, and we're going to check our matching through the S11 of each port. So port 1, 1, mag, db, add, 2, 2, and 3, 3, add, and close. Let's go back to transmission. Up here we will select the lightning bolt, analyze. So here we see this preliminary design gives us about 3.5 dB, tapering down to minus 4 dB for the S21 and the S31. Again, S21 is the triangle and S31 is the magenta square. So we can see that this is fairly decent. We expect a negative 3 dB. There's obviously some changes that we have to make to our design. And we have um, less, uh, or sorry, greater than 6 dB of isolation between ports 2 and 3. Obviously, this is not a perfect design. There will be many fixes that have to be implemented for this to get exactly how we want it. In match, we can see that S11 is sub negative 10 dB, which is exactly what we would expect. And then, obviously, our match on port 2 and 3 is not as good, but we can fix that later. So, as far as this circuit is concerned, we have learned how to set up our projects, frequencies, and units, how to create a circuit, how to drop the necessary components that we need in order to do a microstrip simulation, adding the ports to the final design, and how to generate the graphs for our different S parameters that are of relevance to analyzing the performance of the circuit that we have designed. In the next video, we will go into adding further components to the circuit to improve performance, different other kinds of graphs that might be helpful in order to fix this design. We will also learn about optimization in order to reach the optimum design by setting the parameters that we would like to optimize, their goals, and which variables will be moving up and down in order to achieve those goals. Finally, in a third video, I will be showing the method of extractions so that we can turn this circuit into an EM simulation and get the most accurate possible results for our overall system. And that will bring the three-part series on how to use uh, National Instruments AWR Microwave Office to a close. Thank you so much for watching. Leave any questions you have in the comments, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible.